Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve the first example of chapter 2 Force Vectors in the book of Engineering Mechanics, the Statics part by R.C. Hibbler. So in this example we are being asked to calculate the resultant force FR and it is also being asked to calculate the orientation of that resultant force which should be measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So let's solve this example. So let's consider this hook on which these two forces are being acted. This first force of magnitude 260 pounds is an acting at a an certain angle but we are not being given with the angle but uh, the triangle, the right angle triangle is given with the help of which we can determine the angle. So in this right angle triangle you can see that we have perpendicular as 12 and base as 5. So we can use 10 theta formula to determine the angle. So on doing calculations you are going to get this angle of 67.38 degrees. So let's apply this force on the hook. So there is second force which is acting and has a magnitude of 310 pounds and that force makes an angle of 45 degree with the negative x-axis as you can see. So let's shift this force on this hook now since we are being asked to determine the resultant force, so what we can do here using the head to tail rule, we can place one force at the same position and taking the another force by placing the tail of the one force to the head of the first force. So let's keep the first force as it is and taking the tail of second force and placing it at the head of the first force. So this is what we are going to get and according to head to tail rule the resultant would be from start point to the end point so this will be the resultant force acting on this hook so in order to determine the magnitude and the orientation of the resultant force we can use different methods we can use sine law we can use cosine law so it's up to us so I'm going to use sine law to determine the magnitude of the resultant and also the orientation of the resultant force. So let's say that this angle, the angle the resultant force is making with the negative x-axis is alpha, let's say. So when we are using sine law, so the internal angles are important. We should be knowing these internal angles of this triangle. So let's start with the, this angle first. So this angle would be 67.38 minus alpha angle. How about this? So if this is alpha, this will also be alpha. And if this is 45, the, this will also be 45. It means this internal angle would be alpha plus 45 degree. And how about this internal angle? So if Fn force making an angle of 67.38 degree with the negative x-axis, then this angle would be 90 minus 67.38. On deducting this angle from 90, we are going to get 22.62 degrees. So if this is 45, this will also be 45. And if this is 22.62 degrees, so this will also be 22.62 degrees. So then this internal angle would be the addition of 45 and 22.62. So on adding these two, we are going to get 67.62 degrees. Now let's use sine law to determine the alpha angle first then we are going to determine the resultant so once we will have alpha then we can determine the theta angle which is the angle measured from positive x-axis to the resultant force this force i'm talking about so that theta would be equal to 180 degree minus alpha for the orientation so according to sine law sine of any angle let's say this angle which is 67.38 minus alpha divided by the opposite side which is 310 would be equal to the next angle let's say this angle which is sine alpha plus 45 so the opposite side of this angle is f1 which is 260 so in this equation you can see there is only alpha is the variable so I'm not going to do the simple calculations. 
uh, I believe you are expert in doing the simple calculations. So when you do the simple calculations, you are going to get the value of alpha as 3.728 degrees. So once we have alpha, then we can determine theta, which will be then 176.272 degrees. Now for the resultant force, we can use again sine law or we can use cosine law but since we have uh, used sine law for the determination of the orientation of this resultant force so again we can use the sine law to determine the resultant force so for the determination of the resultant force the opposite angle is 67.62 so sine 67.62 divide by the resultant force is equal to we can use any side let's say we are going to use this side where we have sine 67.38 minus alpha that we have just calculated that is 3.728 degrees divided by the opposite angle which is 310 so in this equation you can see there is only one variable is there which is fr the resultant force so on doing calculations we are going to get the resultant force as 320 pounds so that is the answer and this is also the answer so we just have calculated the resultant force and also the orientation of the resultant force so this is all from this video where we have learned about the calculation of the resultant force and its orientation when the two forces are given with their orientation that's all thank you for watching this video